Okay, well, let's turn our attention to our study of Scripture this morning. Today, we're looking at the last week of our series in the book of Psalms. So we've called this series Lexio Divina. That's a fancy Latin phrase that means divine reading. And so we've been exploring the Psalms for the last couple months, but with a particular approach to them, using this ancient Christian method of devotional reading called Lexio Divina. But as we get into this today, let's start off by talking a little bit about communication. So there's been a couple times in my life where I've come alongside a friend or somebody that wanted some help practically with knowing how to talk to people. Now, if you think about it, that may strike some of you as very strange. Like, what do you mean? I've always known how to easily talk to people. Other of you might be like, oh yeah, I understand. This can be a challenge. Because people have different personalities, and some people are very equipped to make conversation with folks, and other people, this is a challenge. And this, in fact, may, in our culture and our time, grow to be more and more of a challenge because so much of our time is now spent alone with screens that I bet you if we charted our average interaction with people in person, this is probably going down. So this question of having the skills or the abilities to have a conversation with someone may become increasingly important. But if this is something that someone struggles with, the good news is uh, there are communication skills that we can practice and learn just like in many other areas of life. So for example, if you look up some personal, interpersonal communication skills, one of the things you'll see that experts have written on is eye contact. Turns out eye contact is very important when you're talking with someone. So recommendations along these lines, some people will say, look, it's very important when you start talking with someone, especially that you look them in the eye. If you start talking to someone and you're looking off to the side, that's going to look very peculiar. Um, But there's even more specific guidance than this. They'll say, you know what, when you are um, talking to somebody, you should try to maintain eye contact with them about 50% of the time. Because what happens if you make eye contact 100% of the time? Okay, that could be a little unnerving. They feel like, wow, they're really, really staring at me. They say, look, when you break that eye contact, you don't want to flick your eyes away real quick. That makes you look nervous. You don't want to move your eyes down. That makes you look unconfident. So the best way is to move your eyes to the right or the left, again, aiming for about 50% eye contact when you are speaking to somebody. But the recommendation changes when you are listening to someone else who's talking to you. There the recommendation is you should maintain eye contact 70% of the time. Okay, fair enough. Well, let's talk about another aspect of communication and something that could help us grow in our ability to talk with somebody. So here's a beach ball. And we can think about a conversation as two people throwing a ball back and forth. Kids, how many of you have played a game of catch? All right, you need at least two people to play catch. You need one person throwing the ball and one person catching it and passing it back. So think of a conversation as a game of catch with the ball going back and forth. Now, I've observed sometimes young people can get intimidated when an adult talks to them. Like a lot of young people, students, real comfortable talking with their peers, but if an adult talks to them, all of a sudden, it's like, oh man, I'm like a deer in the headlights. Well, I've got good news for you kids. Even though we look wrinkly and we're losing our hair and our posture isn't as good, believe it or not, we grown-ups on the inside are exactly the same as you. I think most of us probably feel just like when we were kids, okay? So be confident. We're actually just like you. But what I've observed a lot of times when an adult tries to talk to a young person is they will start the conversation by throwing the ball, by saying something. Hi, so how's school going for you? So they threw the ball to the kid. Good. Silence. Notice, what did that young person not do? They didn't throw the ball back. They didn't make some sort of statement that helps this conversation go on. So our poor adult tries again. Well, um, do you do any extracurricular activities? No. Silence. And eventually our poor adult will just give up. So notice, if we're going to have a good conversation, we need to pass this ball back and forth. So if someone says, uh, do you do an extra extra No. To keep the conversation going, we've got to give something back. We've got to send something back, a response to the person, particularly something that they can respond to. So young people, grown-ups, if you're in a conversation, you're like, holy cow, I don't know what to say. Great advice is always just ask a question about the person. Because we're inherently selfish, we like to talk about ourselves. So, oh, no, I don't do anything. What sort of things did you do when you were in school? 
Now notice I've thrown the ball back, and now we can continue this conversation. Okay, what in the world are we talking about and why? Well, is God a person? Yes, he is. In fact, God is three persons. Because we believe in a God who is one God, but has always existed as three persons, Father, Son, and Spirit. Are you a person? Yeah. So notice the possibility exists for us to communicate, to have a conversation with God. Now I think in rare occasions, it certainly could happen and certainly does sometimes happen, I think, that God speaks directly audibly to someone. So you might hear a voice in your mind. You might hear a voice in your ears. That's pretty rare, probably in the direst of circumstances, and we got to be careful because we may not be sure exactly what's talking to us, but that's highly unusual for the most part. I think most of the time, the way God has chosen to speak to us is through the Scriptures, through the Bible, which He has arranged to be written, to be written exactly how He wanted to reveal Himself to us. And so as we talk about this process that we've been focusing on the last few months, we call Lexio Divina, divine reading, this is what this strategy is all about, is learning to listen and to hear those things that God is saying to us. As we follow this path of Lexio Divina as a strategy to spend time in the Scripture, our hope is we're going to hear what God is communicating to us. But the goal is a communication. The goal is talking. And so we don't want to only listen. We don't want to only catch the ball. We want to throw it back too. And so most typically, if God's way of speaking to us these days is through the Scripture, our primary way of communicating back to God is through prayer. And so notice in this process, as we'll see soon, if you haven't seen it before, in the process of Lexio Divina, there is the reading of Scripture put together with the responding to God in prayer. And so what we end up with is the going back and forth, the communicating between us and God. And this will do a lot of things for us. It will, will, among other things, allow us to grow closer to God. Okay, we are going to do something very out of the ordinary for us today. We're not going to have a normal message Instead, we decided what we want to do to end this series on Lexio Divina is to carve out time for us as a group here and live in our own living rooms to practice this method of reading Scripture together. So what we're going to do is together, in the end, look at a particular psalm, Psalm 90, and we are going to walk through the experience of Lexio Divina together. Okay, but we're going to do a little age breakup thing. So we already released the younger kids to Children's Church. Uh, any students here that are third grade through sixth grade, we're going to release you uh, to go with Levi and Amelia Bergman. They're at the back door. And they're going to take uh, you guys to room 101 in the back corner, and you will have your own version of this that you will be practicing with those guys. So third graders to sixth graders, if you want to go with them, go for it. If you want to stay here, you are certainly welcome to do that too. Okay? So the rest of us, go ahead and find your outline. So maybe you got a bulletin when you came in. The outline is available also digitally on our church app. You should, if you're looking online, it should be somewhere in the link around you. If you're here with us, I put some extra inserts with the notes in the bullet in the pews somewhere there around you. If you don't have either of those, find a Bible and go ahead and open it to Psalm 90. So those of you that may be uh, at home watching live, go ahead and find a Bible or go on the internet and open up to Psalm 90 if you can't find our normal notes. And we will jump into this together. Let's start here, back up a little bit, look at part one on your outline. We're calling this Praying the Psalms. We want to say a few things every week, as we have been, to help orient us to how do we make best use of this book of the Scriptures. I've given you some quotes here on your outline. We're not going to read all these now. I'll let you do that on your own. But the gist of what those quotes are saying is that what we have in the Psalms is something very interesting. So on one hand, the Scriptures is God's message to us, yes? This is what God is speaking to us. And so, in the part of Lexio Divina, we are listening to what God is telling us in Scriptures. But there's something very unique about the Psalms. The Psalms, yes, are God's communication to us, but most of the Psalms are framed as prayers of people to God. So God has given us the Psalms as a way of talking back to Him, in a positive sense. <laughs> the Psalms are given to us as prayers, as ways to shape our communication to God. So this is why the Psalms are so strategic in the spiritual life. 
We learn things about God through them. God speaks to us through the Psalms, but the words of the Psalms also frame our own response to God. These are the words that God likes to hear from us. And so think in the life of Jesus as he is dying on the cross, uh, as you could see in the Gospel of Mark, as he is on the cross in torment, he calls to mind one of the Psalms that he had memorized probably as a young person, Psalm 22, and he takes the words and the language of Psalms on his lips to express his horror and his despair as he cries out using Psalm 22, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So we see Jesus in his darkest moments taking the words of the Psalms on his lips. So it's his twofold nature of the Psalms that make them in part so useful to us. Well, look at part two on your outline. Let's say a few things about our process of Lexio Divina. Now, this is not rocket science. Lexio Divina is simply an ancient Christian approach to the devotional reading of Scripture. It's a way of helping us to sit with the Scriptures, to listen to what God has for us in them, but then also to frame our response to God in prayer based on what He has told us in Scripture. So on your outline, I've given you the typical four steps of Lexio Divina plus a fifth bonus step. So what is this process? And again, we're going to go through this together collectively in a few moments. But the first step of Lexio Divina is reading. And so what we do is we select some chunk of Scripture. This fall, we've said take one psalm. And we read over this psalm a couple times. You want to get a sense for it. Get a sense for what is this whole section of Scripture saying. But what you're particularly doing is looking for a small part of that psalm to jump off the page at you. Maybe it's a phrase. Maybe it's a verse. You're saying, okay, what is the part of this psalm that God is causing to really jump out and strike my heart today? This is God's particular message to you in the Scripture that day. Uh, We've used the illustration of a box of chocolates. Like you look at it, pick this up. What is this? Oh, it's uh, one of those cherry things. Nope, don't want that. What's this one? A truffle? I don't know. Is that a mushroom? I'm not sure. Nope. What's this? Oh, this is one of those coconut. I like that one. You find the one you like, then you eat it. So in the reading stage, you're casting your eye over the whole psalm, looking for that little part of it that God's going to cause to come alive to you. Well, what if you do this and nothing jumps out? If that happens, I'd say more or less pick some little chunk at random and trust that God has something there for you, okay? So now step two of Lexio Divina, this is meditation. Meditation is essentially just focused thinking. In this case, we want to spend a few minutes then uh, zeroing in and focusing on that small chunk of Scripture that jumped off the page at you. Hebrew word for meditation means to murmur, to repeat. So repeat it out loud to yourself quietly a few times. Try to memorize it. Uh, Look at it from different angles. Uh, Use your imagination to try to put yourself into it. Is is it a word picture? Put yourself there. So the goal is we want to linger and spend some extra particular time with that one small piece of Scripture that God has brought to our attention. The next step then is prayer. So here now we have, God has uh, uh, passed us the ball. We have caught it, and now we want to throw the ball back. We want to respond to God in prayer. So the first way to do this, that little phrase that you meditate on, pray that back to God. Now an advantage for us in the Psalms is usually these little sections, they're already framed in a way as prayers. So we can just pray them as is. Sometimes you got to reword it a little bit. Then you want to spend some time praying to God on the themes of that little section. So whatever that little chosen part is, spend some time praying to God about what it's talking about. Thank God for those things. Pray to God for these things to be truer in your life. Pray for these things to be truer in the lives of those you care about. Okay? Then step four, which is typically the end of Lexio Divina, this is called contemplation. And here we just take a few moments of stillness and quiet and silence before the Lord. It's physical silence, meaning we're not talking. But we also want to achieve a kind of mental silence. We want to stop the endless flow of chattering thoughts in our heads. And we want to focus our attention on God, to pay attention to Him, to just linger in His presence and try to direct the love of our hearts towards Him. So this is typically where Lexio Divina stops in terms of process, and that's all we've said about it for the last six weeks. But notice today we've added a fifth step, and some writers have explored this. Uh, This goes back to Martin Luther, who suggested this as a final step of this process, and we'll call this a step five response. And the idea here is we don't want to just stop when we've read the scripture, thought about it, prayed it back to God, and sat in silence. How foolish it would be to move on with our day unchanged and untouched. So step five reminds us that our ultimate goal is to live out 
and to put into practice whatever it is we have seen from God that day, okay? All right, so like I said, we are going to uh, do something different today, and we are going to zero in together and spend some time going through this process of Lexio Divina together. So this is not going to be weird. I'm not going to embarrass you. We're not going to do anything crazy. But what we're going to do is take the next, uh, oh, we have about a half hour, okay? And we want to take this time, and we are going to walk through this process together. So we'll each be doing this individually, but we'll be moving and proceeding along together. So maybe it's your first Sunday. Maybe you're dialing in, uh, watching us online. You've never heard of this. So here's an opportunity for you to practice this along with us to learn the method. Uh, Maybe you've been here for parts of this series, but you've never tried this method of Scripture reading yet. This gives you an opportunity to do it. And maybe you've been doing this quite a bit over the last few months, but here will be a new aspect of the experience of, of doing it as a group together, okay? So, uh, I encourage you to just become comfortable, all right? We're carving out some space here for God to come and to speak to us through the Scriptures. So, here in this room, we got a fair bit of room. So, if at any point you want to get up and move around, you are certainly welcome to. Uh, if you'd be more comfortable finding a place in the auditorium here and kneeling down, hey, go for it. Uh, if you want to come to one of the empty pews, great. If you want to come up front and kneel down up here, awesome. Whatever you want to do to help remove some distractions and to help you focus on the Lord, uh, this is what we want, okay? So for this, you're really going to need a copy of Psalm 90 again. So grab our outline or find on the internet Psalm 90 or in our church app. Okay, so I'm going to pray. And then uh, we're going to ask the Lord to come and work through this process together. Then I'll give you a few minutes, minutes to pray the same sort of thing for yourself. So let's go before the Lord and invite him to come and lead us in this process. Father, we know you are always present with us, but we are not always present with you. Well, Father, we want to be present with you in this time. We dedicate the next few minutes, Lord God, to seek you in the scriptures you have given us. Father, we pray, those of us here in this room, Help us to sense your presence. Help us to come into your presence and hear your voice in the scriptures. Father, for those uh, in their living rooms or other places live, please meet them there. Make these places where they are joining us small sanctuaries with your presence as well. Father, we pray that you will help us to remove from our minds all the distractions, all the things pressing on us from our week. And Lord, help us to focus on you and your presence with us. So come, Lord, by your spirit and move among us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Take a few minutes on your own in silence. Pray the same thing for yourself. and See if you can let go of some of your worries and some of your distracting thoughts. Give those to the Lord and seek to focus your attention on Him in expectation. Lord, hear our prayer. I'm going to read our psalm for the day. This is Psalm 90. Now, if you look at it, you will see this says a prayer of Moses, the man of God. So this is a prayer written by Moses long ago. And this psalm is classified as a communal lament. A lament is a cry out to God in despair or need. So this is the cry of a community. It's particularly appropriate as we are doing this here together. So at this point, I'm going to read this psalm out loud. Uh, You are welcome to follow along on your handout or on the app, or you can close your eyes and just listen. After I read this, I will give you a few more minutes to just spend alone with this psalm, uh, reading over it. So remember, we're trying to get a sense of the whole, and we're also looking for that part of the psalm that God is going to cause to come alive to us and Jump off the page for us. So here's Psalm 90. A prayer of Moses, the man of God. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. 
before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn people back to dust, saying, return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. In the morning it springs up new, but by evening it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. Our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures. Yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. If only we knew the power of your anger. Your wrath is as great as the fear that is your due. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, Lord. How long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children. May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Take the next few minutes and sit with this psalm, listening to God speaking in it to you.
Okay, now we want to shift to our second step of Lexio Divina, that of meditation. So hopefully some part of this jumped off the page to you. Focus in on that verse, that phrase, that line that God has put on your heart. Look at it from every angle. Repeat it to yourself. Memorize it. Maybe you're artistic. You can draw a picture that conveys the sense of this verse to you. So in our conversation, in our game of catch, God has thrown us the ball. Now we have caught it, and now it's in our hands, and we realize, wow, it's not a beach ball. This is a beautiful jewel. And now we want to examine it and study it and see what God has for us in it. So take the next few minutes with your chosen section of this psalm. Now let's move to step three of Lexio Divina, which is prayer. God has thrown the ball to us. We've caught it. We've studied it. Now it's time to throw the ball back. Now we want to respond in prayer to what God has said to us through the scriptures. So turn your chosen section of scripture into a prayer and then pray to God along the lines of whatever themes you find there. Lord, hear our prayer.
Okay, let's transition now to step four of Lexio Divina. So here is contemplation. Here we simply sit in silence before the Lord. Now to make this extra challenging, we're not even going to do any background music, okay? So this is real life. So as you attempt to sit in silence and quiet before the Lord, guess what? You're going to hear distractions, right? You'll hear babies. You'll hear people clear their throats. Uh, You'll hear your own stomach gurgle. That's okay. Those are external distractions. There's also going to be internal distractions. As you're trying to focus on God, thoughts, all sorts of thoughts are going to crowd into your mind. What are we going to have for lunch? What time is it? That's okay. The way I want you to think about this is acknowledge those distractions, recognize them, and just to turn your attention back to God. What many have found very helpful to return our attention back to God is to, in our mind, say a name for God, like Lord or Jesus. and Use this as a way of pulling your attention back to God. Uh, Think about having a conversation with a friend. You're talking with someone. Now there's some distraction happening behind them. Oh, there goes a car. It's going by too fast. Yeah, you're going to notice it, acknowledge it. Oh, yeah, saw that. But then you're going to return your attention back to your friend and pay attention. So this is what we want to do now as we sit quietly before the Lord, focusing our thoughts, our minds on Him, and trying to cultivate in our hearts a sense of love for Him that is directed towards Him. You'll notice distractions. That's okay. Acknowledge it and return your attention to God. And again, you can try using a name for God for this. Let us sit silently before the Lord, seeking His presence now together. Father, we thank you that you are always with us, even when we're not with you. Paul talks about how in you we live and move and have our being. Father, we pray that we will carry with us this sense of your presence. And we thank you for how you have spoken us, spoken to us today through your scriptures. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, now we want to transition to step five of Lexio Divina, as we talked about today. And this is the step of response. What God has spoken to us through the scriptures, we now wish to put into practice in our lives. And so for this, we will move into our time of celebrating communion. So our ushers are going to prepare to distribute the bread and the cup to us. And as we are passing out the bread, I invite you to go before the Lord and wrestle with, okay, based on what God has told you, what he has said to you through the scriptures today, what is the response he is asking for? How can you put this into practice in your life? How can you live this out today, tomorrow, and in the week to come? Lord, hear our prayer. Ushers, please come and distribute the bread.
us pray. Father, we confess before you that we have not lived our lives in such a way that we have always listened to you and we have always done what you have said. Lord, we have fallen far short of this. Uh, We see our guilt before you, Lord God Almighty. We confess, Father, that we have sinned against you in word, thought, and deed by both what we have done and what we have left undone. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for sending him into the world to live a perfect life in our place. We thank you for his death on the cross whereby our sins are forgiven. And we thank you for his resurrection from the dead, his defeat of death. Lord God, we believe in Jesus. Please forgive us our sins and restore our relationship with you. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. We will now distribute the cup. Forgiveness spilling down from where the Savior died. The Son of Man upon the tree, exchanging death for life. See him there in innocence, the body and the blood. Behold the King. Crucified, spotless Lamb of God. Oh, the precious love of Jesus. Oh, the fount of grace divine. Flowing as a mighty river. Washing sinners in its tide. There will never be another in whose name we are redeemed. Oh, the precious love of Jesus pouring down for you and me. Sin and death crushed underneath the weight of nail-pierced hands he plundered hell and tore the veil as creation held its breath and on the morning of the third the sun began to rise up from the grave victorious hallelujah he's alive love of Jesus, oh, the fount of grace divine, flowing as a mighty river, washing sinners in its tide. There will never be another in whose name we are redeemed, oh, the precious love of Jesus. Holding out for you and me. He is worthy, he is worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Sing forever, hallelujah, worthy is the divine, flowing as a mighty river, 
washing sinners in its tide. There will never be another in whose name we are redeemed. Oh, the precious love of Jesus pouring out for you and me. Oh, the precious love of Jesus pouring out for you and me. The blood of Christ shed for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Amen. Well, we did today something unusual. Coming together and lingering, seeking God's presence and seeking to hear God's voice through Psalm 90. And I trust that he spoke something to you. I, spoke he, I trust he put something on your heart. And I encourage you to take that sense of his presence and that teaching that you heard from him with you as you go. And as you think about our life with God, remember this idea of communication, going back and forth. We hear from God through the scriptures chiefly, but then we respond to him in prayer. And it's this back and forth whereby we chiefly communicate with him. And if you think about conversations on a human level, what's accomplished through these conversations? Like, why do we spend so much time uh, throwing the ball back and forth? Well, there's practical help. I mean, it's through conversation through talking, we communicate need, uh, we express uh, affirmation, and yet one of the great things that is accomplished, even at the human level, through talking back and forth, this is a key mechanism whereby friendship is developed and relationships are strengthened. And if that's true of us on the human level, so too on the level between us and God. As we engage with God through his words to us in scripture and our response to him in prayer, through that back and forth, our friendship with him and relationship with him is strengthened. So thank you for engaging with us today. Uh, If there's something going on in your life that you could use prayer for, we'll have some members of our prayer team uh, right up here uh, by the piano. They would love to meet with you and pray with you today. Otherwise, go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Repay no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.